This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. of the United States of America. Ladies ladies and gentlemen, presenting Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello, Larry. Hello, I've just gotten back from Kabul. <laughs> yeah, 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 we're even entertaining the troops, are you? <laughs> That'd be a great gig right now. <laughs> In the immortal words of Bob Hope, but I want to tell you. <laughs> I want to tell you. <laughs> yeah, I want to tell you. Um, um, yeah, uh, where are you entertaining the troops? Anywhere? <laughs> There's no troops left. No, There's, there are no troops. Yeah, you. So you. You. We're still you, waiting for uh, some of the clubs are open now, and I think we have to. Uh, I think you have to have show vaccine proof to get in, it's starting fairly soon. Yeah. Well, it, here's the thing. Um, uh, uh, I saw a thing on San Francisco yesterday. And uh, they said that the rents are twenty percent cheaper in San Francisco than they have. They been. did drop a little, yes. Yeah, and the reason is, I guess. Uh, well, it, you can work from home, and a lot of people just decided to move out of here. All the tech people. Yeah, they said. I saw the thing. They said some woman decided to work because she could work from home. She moved to Iowa. Yeah. Y- you know, I mean, people are sometimes moving to the place where they were born, what have you. So. You know, uh, but twenty percent cheaper. I'm thinking of moving back. What the hell? You know. Yeah, it'd only be eight thousand a month. Yeah, only eight thousand a month. Well, you know, if I b- took a home, I'd probably go up to like Napa, Mendocino, somewhere like that. Get myself a little, little place. You know, you could yeah. probably get something for a couple of grand a month, tops. You know. Maybe, although Napa is incredibly expensive now. Well, Napa is, but if you go hop further, if you go to like Mendocino. Mendocino, place, yeah, which yeah. is, uh, that's a nice place. Or some place that's been burned out. I think that that's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, get a fire sale. Of mm-hmm. course. And our state is on fire. So. See, here's the thing. I think they should let all the, my theory, okay, call it stupid. They should let all the fires uh, burn without putting them out. And eventually, the entire state will have burnt down, <laughs> and then there'll be no more fires. Okay, you're free of fires for at least, you know, I'd say ten years before those trees grow back. And as they start growing back, chop them down. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, they're blocking the view. <laughs> they don't have forest fires in Nevada. Come on, think about it. And there are people living there. They're happy. Uh, but uh, boy, I mean, I look at those fires and I go, Gee, "How much more is there to burn?" Yeah, it's horrifying. You know, and they keep naming all these fires, and I can't figure out how they come up with the names on them. Yeah, the the, the Dixie Fire, which I, I yeah. think the town is named Dixie, where it started. I think that's how they. Is do that it. how they do it? Yeah. yeah. Okay, but I mean, it's it's just it's terrible what's happening there. And then what happens once the fires are put out, then come the rains and the mudslides because there's nothing yeah. to hold the rain, you know, the, the, the rain back. And it all starts flooding. So, I mean, it, it, it's one disaster after another in that state. And then the, uh, let me talk about the biggest disaster. When's your election? Uh, the recall is September 14th. September 14th. Coming right up on, on it soon. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my life. Just the whole process of it. You know? That's we, the initiative process. That's part of the... Uh, that's from 100 years. That was the progressive movement. That's from 100 years ago with the... Um, where they uh, you had the recall, and they brought in where you could vote on propositions. So it was meant for propositions more than for people. 
Yeah, but it, it gave the people. That's when the railroad apparently ran the state of California. So to get around that, they came up with propositions so the people could vote on things rather than have the railroad. The railroads were the tech people of the day. So yeah, right. They ran the entire state. So. Right. So now, now they're applying it to people. Somebody found out you could also recall a governor, right? Well, we recalled uh, one not that long ago, Gray Davis, and that's how Arnold got in. Right, right. And what happens here, he, what, what's stupid about the whole process is you want to recall the governor. Now, i got to tell you, most people hate whoever's in office, okay? So to recall them is not the most difficult thing in the world to do. But it is probably totally unfair because all they're trying to do is do their job, right? Yeah. Uh, so far, I think I'm right on this. <laughs> uh, then they say, okay, we're going to hold a, 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 a recall vote. You can either vote to keep the governor or to get rid of him. And, uh, you know, people who like the governor are probably not going to go out and vote, but they have to now, and they have to go out of their way to vote because without your vote, he's out of there. Okay? Now, if you don't want him back in, and you're voting for the recall, um, there is a list of candidates. In this case, there are, what, 55? Something like that. And it's like, I could have run for, all you have to do is file a fee. I think it's $250. No, and it's, it's, on the it, it, it's $2,500. But, or you, all you have, or you can just get people, so many people to sign a petition. Then you don't have to pay the money. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you're running. Well, they're 55 this time. They were 135 the last time. Okay? But they're 55. All that has to happen is, if you didn't vote, if you voted against the governor, now you have to vote for one of these people. And the mm -hmm. fact is that these people don't have to win by 50% of the vote. They only have to win the vote. Which right. means a guy like Larry Elder... Okay, who is the leader right now in California? All he has to have is like, you know, ten more votes than the guy who didn't beat him. You know, I mean, he he can win ten per, he can win ten percent of the vote, or he can win five percent of the vote, uh, because you got fifty five people running. Where's he going to place? And so, a person with a name like Larry Elder, not much of a name. Uh, but a name like Larry Elder uh, is, is going to have the advantage. Like Schwarzenegger had the advantage because <clears throat> he was a known quantity. You know, so uh, uh, Schwarzenegger won because everybody knew the name. They knew who he was. Oh, I don't know. I've seen his movies. I like him. Let's vote for him. Uh, he also became governor a second time. He did, yeah. And I you know. Not a particularly good one, but uh, that you don't underestimate the power of celebrity. If, um, well, I mean, if, if that's what it takes to win, I mean, it, it takes to win in a recall. In anything else, it takes some kind of political background and history and things you can run on. I mean, what's, well, Larry, what's Larry Elder? Uh, except when it came to Trump. Well, what's Larry Elder running on? You know? Uh, I guess the, the state and the State of decay. I think that's it's the all the things the he. It's thing. all the things he did on his radio show. It's uh, you know he wants to deport all aliens. You know I mean he's such an. I mean if you wind up with him as your governor, I have a bedroom you can stay in here. <laughs> okay. I mean I mean California, which I think is one of the more intelligent states. Occasionally gets really stupid, and they, if they elect Larry Elder as their governor, they get they're acting really stupid. You know, that would be our third. What have we had two actors as, we go, as governor, Reagan and uh, Arnold. Yes, you're right. I didn't think you had two go two movie actors, but you're right. And we had a a movie actor as a senator, George Murphy. I uh, don't remember him. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Tom Lehrer who wrote a song called Unless We Finally Have a Senator Who Can Sing and Dance. Uh, 
but uh, George Murphy was uh, gov- was a senator from California. Uh, you know, I understand where a movie star in California, a movie actor, might run for something, because after maybe their movie career is over, they're political, they want to run. You know, they live in California, they have their home in California. Why, why not do that? I mean, you know who the earliest one I remember? There was an actress. Her name was Helen Gehagen Douglas, who was an actress. My uh, father talked about her because he hated. Did she run against Nixon because he hated he, Nixon? <laughs> well, Nixon called her like a communist or something. He did. He he really did a a one of the really bad, horrible slur campaigns that one candidate would do to another. And it was against Helen Gehagen Douglas, or Helen Gehagen. In the movie, she was known as Helen Gehagen, and she was the star of the movie She, the original one, back in the, I think, early 30s. Uh, and uh, she, she was an actress, and she, uh, she ran for, I think it was senator, against Richard Nixon. And Nixon did a real slur campaign against her, calling her a communist, and she had communist leanings and all of that, and that's how he won. My father hated uh, hated Nixon for that reason, too. It's strange. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he probably would have gotten along with my father. He just detested Nixon. Well, wait a minute. Are you from California? No. No, no, but uh, well, this is back in Ohio, but I remember he just, he talked about Nixon then. I guess Nixon was vice president, I guess, when I was here. Oh, Ohio, okay, but. and so he knew about the whole Helen Gehagen situation. He knew about that. Yeah, he'd heard about that. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it's not unusual for people in California who run for office and be former actors. But I say they should be former actors. I I don't think you should trade in your popularity in one medium to become a politician. Uh, You know, um, the only time I've ever seen it work out okay is Al Franken was pretty good. You know, and he went from... He went from TV to having a radio show to running for Senate. But I never thought you should turn that in to, to win something, you know? People, people who get to know you on the radio, for instance, it's an entirely different person than you are, you know? And, and to base your desire to vote for them on the fact that you listen to them every day on the radio, terrible, just yeah. terrible, you know? Um, the only two things that you can win doing that is become governor of California or be inducted into the Radio Hall of Fame. <laughs> uh, so, you know. By now, that's a, a callback joke, by the way. <laughs> when we were recording this, I just found out that I didn't win because I lost to two people who I was going to lose to anybody. They were the best ones because I never heard of them. <laughs> you know? You go, what? You know, why have I, you know, I I agree with Sally, Jesse Raphael, who once said to me, I know who I screwed to get into this business. Who do I screw to get out? You know, but anyway, so, um, uh, uh, so you got fires in California. You got this recall thing, which is just, you got to, they got to do away with that. The whole process is terrible. The cream does not rise to the top. Well, it does seem a little flawed the way that uh, the you got fifty people running for the, the guy that gets the most votes. That can, yeah, you can get you it, could get it, a real you, nut job. You don't there. have to get the majority. All you have to get is the highest number highest of votes. Vote, yeah. So conceivably, somebody could uh, only have two percent of people voting for them, and they've won. Exactly. If you got fifty-five people running, you got to get more than, let's say, 2% in order to win. So if you get 3% of the vote, you might just be the next governor. And that doesn't mean that it was a landslide of people wanting you to be governor. So, Well, we should have run Durst. But you should have run Durst, right, from his hospital bed. Yeah, he could have taken it. Yes, right? But vote for the only candidate who's a stroke victim. You know, maybe maybe we can write. Can you write an in on this? <laughs> we could write. Now, guess guess who I uh, had uh, in my apartment yesterday 
Of course, this is a couple of weeks from yesterday, but that you're hearing this, folks. But I would say Shecky. No. Guess again. Uh, do I know him? No, you know her. Her. Oh, uh, Lori Thompson. Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She came by with her uh, her future intended. The uh, the man she's going to marry. His name is Rick. Great guy. Like him a lot. Yeah, she's getting married. That's the last time I talked to her a few months ago. She's getting married. Right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, they so they spent a couple hours with us here before they were going over to New Jersey. And uh, it was good to see her after all this. In case people don't know, Lori Thompson was my uh, news person uh, when I did my morning show in San Francisco. So she was very well known. Also because I, I made them advertise the show as Alex the Alex Bennett program with Lori Thompson. Uh, which uh, I did because I felt she needed to get the credit, you know. Uh, and uh, I, I think nearly over, and it's wonderful to see her. And yeah, she, she's a great person. I love Lori. She's now 61, and I looked at her, and I said, so you're getting married? And she said, yes. And I said, aren't you a little young to make this kind of decision? Yeah, so. <laughs> and where, where is she living? Uh, she's living currently in, believe it or not, hold on to your pants, Mississippi. Ooh, wow. But they're thinking of moving to Florida. I said, you really want to ruin your life? You want to move from Mississippi to Florida? Yeah. Is she, is she seeking humidity? <laughs> I don't know, but her husband, I think, has a bunch of homes and stuff. He's, oh. uh, he's, okay, he's, he's done okay in his life. And uh, uh, they are... They're just thinking of moving somewhere else. You know? So she's not working? She, I don't think she's working right now. She didn't give me the indication she was. She talked about jobs she had had, you know, and places she had worked over the time, and we talked about that. She had uh, a great voice. A great voice, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, uh, it, 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 uh, she, she, I think, uh, you know, she's kind of not doing much radio. As I am, you know. Well, that's when radio was fun. Someone just sent me a picture of the uh, of me at the uh, punchline when you did. Remember, you did a live morning show there when. Right, right. Uh, those were great. Yeah, well, you know, we what, what I did was bring back old radio. Is what I did, you know, with the yeah, studio that was audience. So much, that's when radio was fun. Well, you know, she said to me that she never had as much fun in her life. You know, as she did doing that show, um, and I don't, I don't think I've had as much fun in my life as doing that show. Uh, and I think if I want to be known for anything, you know, I'm known for a couple of things. I'm known for being in New York and being like the youth guru during the hippie period, you know, and having people on like Abby Hoffman and so on. And then I went to California and I, I completely rewrote my history. Because there I was known as the king of comedy, you know. Mm -hmm. It's the guy who had the comedians on every morning and did this radio show and was very popular. And uh, I think if I'm prouder of one or the other, I would have to say that San Francisco is the most fun, you know, and the most successful. But somebody said to me, you always love a place where they accepted you, you know. And I got accepted in San Francisco. Yeah. And in a lot of ways, I, I often said to people, I went to back to San Francisco to get even because when I was a kid, everybody went, oh, you're never going to make it. What are you going to show business? And they always made fun of me, and I was always a kid given a bad time in school. And, uh, you know, because I was just at the weeb, all right? And I told people, I said, I think I came back to San Francisco to get even. <laughs> you know, was, and really I did, I think in a big way. The show was very popular. Uh, I was very popular. I mean, uh, I don't think I'm overstating it, you know. No. Uh, and uh, uh, I got even, you know, in a very nice way. And everybody had a good time and it was a real party. And people remember that program affectionately. I do get people who write to me saying, I remember you at WMCA or at WPLJ or whatever in New York. But most of the stuff I get are from people who are fans out in California. 
Oh, I, uh, Ray James, our old friend Ray, was telling me he was in college, and he said he was down the peninsula somewhere, and he said he was in the parking lot, and there'd be like 25 people in their cars because your show would run past 10 o'clock, and they were still listening to the show. They'd be late for class. Really? So, yeah. Really? What's Ray James doing these days? He's down in L.A. He was he wrote for the Family Guy for years, and yeah, then I think yeah, he, yeah, uh, he used to see his credit there. I think he hit 50, so that means you can't work in writing anymore, so I think he's out looking again. So. Yeah, but I imagine he got good money for the family guy. Oh, know? yeah, he's a great, he's a great and writer. And probably, probably Writer's Guild. Yeah. Uh, he probably, you know, he has a good pension from them, so. A lot of people yeah. we knew wound up on the, on, the, on the family guy. Dana Gould was writing for the family guy for years. Gould? Or, or, maybe Sim oh, was this, or was it The Simpsons? He, no, he wrote for The Simpsons. Simpsons, yeah. Yeah. So and when I, I see Alex Reed's credit, another mm -hmm. comedian that we used to have on the show, he, he, uh, he, he's usually down as an executive producer on a lot of shows. You know. The smart comics got into writing, I think. Well, also, I think the, the comics who, who couldn't make it as stage comics, but who had great material and were great writers, wound up writing. Uh, I, you know, I, I think, for instance, that, uh, you know, a, a guy like Feldman, who I don't talk to anymore, but David Feldman, uh, he wound up, wound up as a writer, basically, you know. He got hired originally by Roseanne to write on, uh, by, not by Roseanne, but by her husband. Uh, oh, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, he was kind of yeah. popular for a while. Uh, yeah, J Tom. Arnold, Tom Arnold. Tom Arnold. Uh, and, Tom uh, Arnold hired him to write on Roseanne. And he wrote for Roseanne, then he think, didn't he write for Bill Maher? Then he went to the Bill Maher show and wrote for him for several years, the one at uh, HBO. Uh, and then he left there and... Uh, became disgruntled. I don't know. I mean, he's become a, a just a horrible person. But uh, <laughs> you guys used to be close. Well, he was my he was I'd say my best friend. You know, or one of my best friends. And all of a sudden one day, I don't know, something happened. He turned the switch off. And uh, you know, it's one of those kind of things you go, "What did I do to him?" You ever have people that do that to you? And all of a sudden you go, "Hey, I was nice to that person. What what did I do to them?" You know. Yeah, I think, I think it's called ghosting, where people just kind of leave. Yeah, is that called ghosting? Yeah, uh-huh. You just never talk to them again. Hey, have you ever had anybody <laughs> ghost you? I'm trying to think. I'm sure I have. But, uh, yeah, well, he's kind of he ghosted me. I can't think of anybody else that's ghosted me. Uh, I just, you know, I, just, I, I there are a lot of people I don't talk to, okay, yeah, I talk to you every couple of weeks. I talk to Kravitz. I talk to Pearl. I talk to Durst. Uh, I talk to Slayton. You know, but that's a, that's about it. You know, uh, and, and I, I'm trying to think of who who were some of the major people that I used to have on. Well, Reuben. I used to have Reuben on here, but somehow he disappeared. He's uh, in Canada. Is he? In, he's in Canada now. What yeah. he? Well, he had a wife up there, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah been up there for a few months now. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, but I think he still has his place in L.A. So. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, so, you know, uh, uh, I, I can't think of too many other people who have ghosted me, but I don't know. I don't know. If, if they ghosted me, they must be ghosts, so I don't know who they are, and I don't know where <laughs> they are. Anyway, hey, listen, nice talking to you once again. Alex, I will never ghost you. I, 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 you better not, you motherfucker. <laughs> I, I would hate to ever lose your your friendship and your camaraderie. Well, I'll, I'll ghost you when I die, which would probably be soon, the way I feel. In the way, you feel lousy? Yeah, I just feel crappy. But what? How do you feel crappy? I'm just tired all the time. Hey, let's talk about our aches and pains. Tired all the time? We'll I'm talk about it I'm, next night. Yeah. I'm tired all the time. I'm, of course, I'm thinking a drug that does it, but I'm tired all the time. Well, I'm so, just thinking maybe it's because we're old. I don't know. I don't know I, because this has only happened in the last year or so. Yeah, but you know, I, 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 I Feldman used to have a line that I like, and I've kind of stolen it over the years. And I say, 
Well, I get plenty of exercise. I do 50 push-ups every morning. Well, actually, it takes me 50 times to get out of bed. <laughs> 50 sit-ups. That's See, I even That's fucked up a good line. <laughs> That's a good joke. Good talking to you, Larry. Good, Alex. Larry Bubbles Brown, folks. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. And, of course, Larry Bubbles Brown. No, it's, uh, let, me, uh, let me turn on the lights. Yeah. I forget all these things. I, lights? I, 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 yeah, I'm, I forget all this stuff now. I can't remember where I am at any given moment. So uh, that was Larry Bubbles Brown, and uh, he'll be back on again next week. Uh, come on in. Come on in. I'm rolling in. This is our friend, uh, Buddy Love, who's been here visiting us this week. So we've had him come in since he's, I, he's got nothing to do but sleep, you know. Sleep? Yeah. You're not in the picture, actually. Okay, well. Uh, you got to get in the picture here. There we go. I'll move over. There we go. My hair is perfect now. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful. Yeah, your hair is fine. <laughs> okay. You got to uh, move your head in just a little bit more. A little bit more. Yesterday we had a perfect. But there we go. Perfect. There what you mean? Yeah. <laughs> now you're out of the picture. <laughs> no, I'm out of the picture. I was just watching tonight. I was watching uh, this show that Jackie Gleason did called "You're in the Picture." You remember it lasted one episode, and the next week he went on the air and he sat there in a chair and said, "Last night, last week, we did a show that was the biggest bomb in the history of television." Well, at least he admitted it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was, uh, it was, uh, it was called the, uh, uh, you know, you're in the picture. <laughs> I guess he was not in the picture for long. Oh, yeah, well, you're, you're in the picture. I'm in the picture. Yeah. Good, good, good. Anyway, I think. I should probably uh, admit all these people here, all these people. Two people are waiting, okay? Let's that's it. Two, yeah, hey. two people. That's it. We got two hey, people. Jeff. There that's he is. it. There we go. Two people, folks. Hello, two people. How are you? <laughs> Hello, and I'm talking. Yes. We have Jeff, Jeff, uh, and uh, we have uh, Josh. Hello, Josh. How are you this evening? Good. How are you? Good. Good. I mean, uh, you're you're the only two people calling the program tonight. Uh, shame. shame. We'll see if more people call. It's, it is a shame. It is an absolute shame. Well, it is. Labor I'm sure you'll have more. Well, we'll see. It's we'll Labor see. Day. Some weekend, of them are. Uh, uh, some of them are just a little slow. That's all. Yeah. Well, it's also Labor Day well, weekend. Uh, I think. Now. I think Patrick was. Where's on Josh ca calling from? It looks like uh, Cincinnati. Uh, where are you exactly again, Josh? I live uh, like 25, 30 minutes south of Columbus, Ohio. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So that's not, not, not too far. I, I, I work in Columbus, so it's a. It's, I live close enough to commute, but. Bengals nah, fan? Not, not too close. Uh, you're a Reds fan, right? Yeah. yeah you, you say that with a big sign of the, red, with the Reds in the back of you. And, a big, oh, yeah. huge thing covering your chair that says Reds. No, those are the Bengals stripes. Am I correct? Are you a Bengals? Oh, the, the blanket is, but the flag is. Uh, the flag is that's red. From, uh, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, see, I don't know from any of this. Well, I'm, I'm, and, and I'm the one who has a has a sports Emmy. That's yeah. true. You do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was watching the Giants before I came in for the uh, appearance, uh, and they're ahead. They're um, they got a score. Listen, score I have to warn you. There's that, nobody here that cares no, about wait a minute, sports. No, wait a minute. No, that okay. Any description of anything uh, sports uh, uh, related. No, any description of the game right. is strictly prohibited by the Major Commissioner League. Baseball without the express written permission. Okay. Okay, am I right about that, Josh? Uh, it goes something like that. So yeah, technically, right. technically, you I can't, can't report say, a score? No, you know, you can't. Okay, well, I take it back. When the game's over, you anything. can say they won, they lost, whatever. But during the game. But while can... the game's on, you can't say what's been happening during the game. Well, that's ridiculous. Well, it says, don't you don't you ever listen to the end of the of the newscast, of the sportscast, mm -hmm. where it says no part of this game should be recreated without the express permission of the but commissioner of baseball. Just... Well, you see, what happened was there was a guy named... Gordon McClendon, who I worked for, who started the Liberty uh, 
Broadcasting Network. And he right. used to do what they called, this was in the 40s, baseball recreations. My dad did and, those for him and when he was in Guam. What he did was he got the, uh, the, the line scores, and then he would sit there with a guy with, with a sound, sound effects, effects machine yeah. uh, doing the game. And his game play was more popular than the actual coverage my father because was he was so good at doing it and that that's why that rule was made by the commissioner of baseball bastard mm -hmm. my, my father used to take us out to the uh, local baseball field mm -hmm. uh, you know the kids in the uh, and he would do play by play mm -hmm. there's a high hopper out to left field Bob Vickers muffs it he he's chasing I mean full full descriptive but he did uh, Play by play uh, for college uh, baseball yeah. in Boston, yeah. and um, before that, when he was in the Navy during World War II, he was stationed in Guam, mm -hmm. and he would read the tape. If I if I, if I remember tape. correctly, when I was with Armed Forces Radio, uh, I think they did some recreations. Yeah, yeah. My, but my I think they had that. the permission of the commission. They of baseball. did because it was for the the troops. Yeah, yeah. But it, but that, but that's uh, that's that's why that rule came into being was because of a guy I worked for, mm -hmm. okay. uh, and he was very popular doing it too. He he did uh, really yeah he did he got the higher ratings than the actual games themselves. Oh that, <laughs> yes. yeah yeah. I, I don't know what happened to my my mm -hmm. earphones here. I'm trying okay. to. We got Josh. We have yeah. Jeff. We have well us. we have uh, Jeff and and Tom. Hello Tom. Haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, Drop wanted by to say howdy to Buddy Love. Yeah, good to see you, Tom. <coughs> yeah, yeah, I actually uh, caught you at uh, one of your Christmas performances a few years ago at the chapel, and I really enjoyed it. Oh, well, thank you. We're, we are set to go. Uh, keep your fingers crossed, but uh, we're set to do our show on December twenty third. So mm -hmm. spread the word for the twenty. Yeah, we should December. get a whole bunch of us uh, in California, you know, the Bay Area to go and and, and go to the show. Yeah, it's it's been tough um, ev for everybody everywhere in the United States and around the, the world uh, not being able to perform. It, it's uh, it's been tough on my psyche to say the least. So it is. It's mm -hmm. tough on everybody. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, it's been tough on all the comics that I know. Oh. The only <coughs> one who's been kind of lucky uh, is uh, Will Durst, because during the entire COVID thing. He had a stroke and has been in a hospital bed, and so he didn't have to go through saying, "Oh my God, I'm not getting bookings anymore." Yeah, and, you know all of that. You know. Well, we. Hope but I don't know if we'd want to find, if we'd want to have that happen so that we wouldn't right. worry you about not working. You don't want that. Yeah. No, I. I'm, That's uh, tragic. All of you out there who know Will Durst, uh, we're all. Yeah, well, he, he he's on the things. show. In fact, I'm yeah. doing. I'm doing he's going to do something I'm, with do, you tomorrow. Yeah, so. I'm going to do a thing with him tomorrow. Yeah. He's doing. He's doing better. It's great. Great to see it. Great to hear about it. Better by measures. It's. It's yeah. not. I. You know. I don't think he's going to be able to walk. You know. Well. I think that that. That's the hard go. He's going to get his hand back. Right. So he can then. You know. Write. Because he loves writing. writing he's a great is, writer yeah, too. Yes. Yeah. So we're hoping that the, at least that's going for. Good. Him, well, you know. Yeah. But we'll hear Give from to him his tomorrow. GoFundMe. Huh? Give to his GoFundMe. Yeah, there his is a GoFundMe. Yeah, there is a GoFundMe for him. Yeah. Uh, and uh, if you want to, uh, you know, you might you might throw in a couple of bucks. Uh, you just yeah. go to Will Durst on GoFundMe. I, I I don't know what to think about GoFundMe though. They make money off of all of that, right? Well, it must. They must yeah, get but, a percentage of yeah, whatever's Yeah, but raised. I mean, they're making a percentage off of other people's misery. Yeah, that's true. You know, why wasn't there somebody who came up with a free version of GoFundMe? Yeah. You know. Yeah. Or maybe one in which it was a small charge because they had an administration of people they had to hire to run the place. You know. But, I mean, they take 15%, I think. It's like the best thing that happened to GoFundMe, the owner, was the COVID. They take that it's like money? It's like blood money. <laughs> it's like blood, yeah. Oh, we got a lot of people yeah. sick. Oh, we're going to do good this week. <laughs> yeah. That's right. that's quite a bit, 15%. Something like 15%. Yeah. You might yeah. be right. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to make a joke of it. Uh, I mean, that's why if you if if you give uh, uh, yeah. somebody some money, you add 15% just so that they don't have to, you know, yeah. suffer the consequences. 
Unbelievable. But, but he does have a GoFundMe, and it's the one place you can you can give him money. He's done okay. I mean, they've gotten close to two hundred thousand dollars. I think that's very you know, helpful. Yeah, yeah. Um, and thanks to a lot of people who listen to this program too, because I, I promoted it like crazy with Debbie yeah. uh, in the beginning, and uh, they got a lot of money at that point. Good, you know. So, uh, 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 it, but we'll have Will on next week. We'll be playing it next week, and uh, uh, but it's very difficult for me to get to him because I can't get him to answer texts, oh. but he does. He yeah. says. Best way to get a hold of me is text me, and I text him, and then I wait a week and a half, you know. <laughs> so, but so I hope everything works tomorrow for the uh, uh, what do you call it? Zoom call? It usually does. Usually he's he's spot on with that. So. Good. Well, huh. can't see why he wouldn't be. Yeah, but we, you know, I I, I know all these people who are, uh, have gotten ill in one way or another, you know. I mean, the healthiest person I know is Jeff, and he had a stroke years ago. He looks good. Oh, yeah. He's doing good, right? Yeah. yeah, certain things. Yeah. Certain things are perfect, and certain things are not. What are not perfect, Jeff? What are you going to do? What's not perfect? Uh, I can't read very well. Yeah, you were saying not. that. Yeah. Yeah. Why? why that's, a, that's strange that you... that. That a stroke selectively removes certain yeah. abilities. Yeah, certain people have their legs are, are paralyzed somewhat, or uh, it's a brain problem. Or, who knows? It's a variety. There we go. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Because, but it, but in the case of, uh, for instance, in the case of Will, we can do an interview with him because it didn't affect his speech at all. Right. Okay, but it, his leg is in trouble. You know, and his hand was in trouble there for a while, but they've got it working again. Well, maybe, uh, maybe they can get his leg going. Well, it's been two years now, yeah. you know. It's, uh, I mean, how long did it take you to get some modicum of whatever back, oh, Jeff? Functionality? Yeah. It took a full year. Okay, but here we are going with, on. With a, a therapist uh, yeah, every day. Yeah. 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 But... That was a year. We're talking. We're on going on two years now, yeah. and I don't know what the prognosis is on that amount of time. Uh, I don't. It's very strange. Strokes are probably the strangest thing that happened. Yeah. Some people have strokes, and then after a while, they're back to full functionality. My father had a stroke and came back. Yeah, yeah. I'd say ninety-eight percent. He was. Well, fun. thanks for joining us on this happy program where we're talking <laughs> about <laughs> strokes. Isn't this fun? Yeah, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. Well, I had two knee replacements. Sure this that was a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. gee. Are we going to go into this now? Yes. Are we going to go into your knee replacements? And I'm wearing hearing aids. We got on that yesterday. We got on that last night. You even asked me what I was wearing. Well, let's see here. Well, did you hear I had cancer? Yes, I oh, did. Oh, good. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to top him. Yeah. Everybody's got something, right? What? What? Cancer? Cancer schmancer. Cancer top I had two knees me. killing me. Actually, I had the schmancer. I didn't have the cancer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> remember, you got a touch. Remember? Yeah. Alex, Phil got jealous when you got cancer, I think. Remember? He was always crowing about it. Oh, yeah. He was always here. We were, uh, I felt sorry for him. Oh, poor Phil's got cancer, right? And all of a sudden, well, he what he did though, he's, he had his whole prostate cut out. I, yeah, um, remember you used to be, uh, you were really going on. The, that. Uh, all I got was some, you know, radioactive seeds implanted in me. <laughs> yeah. And then the admonition not to let uh, pregnant women sit on my lap. <laughs> That's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Um, but uh, I had a glowing personality for a while. Now, I was radioactive. I think. Radioactive for about three months. Yeah, they really the radioactive. Radio, work. You could you could probably put a Geiger County counter <laughs> next to my prostate and it'll click. Yeah. Yeah. That noise. Well, well, once I went in and I did, I got a, uh, um, uh, a what do you call it? A uh, thing for my heart where they were testing my heart, but it, where they were using a, a nuclear stress test. That's oh, yeah, what a stress test. I've had one of those. And uh, they, in, they, they inject... Um, yeah, the, first of all, they injected adrenaline. a thing to give me stress. Right. Which was a... Well, actually, what it was, it was a tincture of my wife. <laughs> uh, and, and they injected that into your veins. Wow. And that, uh, that, uh, that created stress. 
Uh, but then I got stress, and then uh, mm -hmm. let me see here. Uh, then they then they injected uh, uh, nuclear materials into my system, mm -hmm. and then they went and put me in a thing and looked at my heart, and then they you know. After it was all over, I said, "Okay, so uh, are we all through?" He says, "Yeah, just one thing. What? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, don't get near any pregnant women for a couple of days, <laughs> really, because you're radioactive." Oh, you know, and it's not. I said, "You're kidding, right?" And he said, "No, I'm not kidding. Don't Stay care." Away from any fast food. I mean, what are, what are we doing here? <laughs> What's yeah. going on? Yeah. Well, I went to my doctor and said, "You're going to die." So I don't want a second opinion. He says, "Okay, you're ugly too." Ooh. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, um, let me see here. So, uh, how you been doing there, Tom? Okay. All right. Well, that's okay. exciting. What? No. <laughs> Sounds like fun. Now, what have you been doing? Anything interesting? Or? Mm -hmm. uh, well, you know, I do, I do work as a um, in-home uh, care person. So I've been yeah. working a lot of hours with, a, with one particular person. So that's been keeping me busy. And I haven't been a very, I, I've been trying to be a climate activist, but I've been sort of falling down on the job. I need to get Obviously, because if you looked at the weather, Oh yeah! It's thanks so, it's thanks my, a lot. It's all my fault. Yeah. It's all my fault. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I should have should have done more work on the uh, on uh, on climate change. Yeah. Um, it, 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 now is it is this all global warming that we're seeing the effects of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I think the the best way to <coughs> excuse me. The best way that uh, Dr. Catherine Hayo describes it is, yes, these storms are happening. They would happen anyway, but the, what's happening is they're being fueled by climate change, by, by global warming. So they're making more, more intense storms. So you're gonna be seeing more category four and category five uh, hurricanes coming. And just, that's just part of the equation. You know, yeah. And as I said, I, I like to de describe it. I like to describe it as, as the the loaded dice. Mm -hmm. So if you think of rolling the dice as weather Let's, events. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Ray, we're getting what? some kind of feedback from you. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I don't have any toys here. Uh, yeah. Oh. Okay. Anyway, go ahead, yeah. Tom. But anyway, just so so you know, like weather is rolling the dice, but climate change is actually putting weight on a dice so those extreme weather events are happening more and more and more yeah so that that's that's what we're looking forward to what about all these people that say oh there's no climate change you know that's nothing they're very few they're becoming very few in numbers there, um there are virtually you know, no there, there are no scientists in the world who come down on the side of no climate change right yeah. there are a few they're just all changing their tunes you know it's it's now it's well, there's it's happening, but we can't do anything about it. We might as well give up. Yeah. Oh, that's so, a uh, great there's a, idea. There's a great, yeah, there's a great book by uh, Dr. Michael Mann of um, of uh, Penn State, and uh, he uh, he's uh, uh, written a book called the the New Climate Wars, and he describes the inactivists, and that's what we really got to fight now is the people who are uh, just got to get so depressed that we we don't want to do anything so uh, we really need to fight against that because it is a doable thing it's it's something that we could actually work out if we we get to work on it yeah uh, uh, well so. you know that british uh, broadcaster what's his name um david attenborough david attenborough uh, yeah. did a thing that's on about what the world's going to be like in 25 years 50 years mm -hmm. 100 years 200 years if we don't do anything right okay and he showed what's happening already and then he showed what the effects of that could be in time on this show but then he also said all of it is reversible mm -hmm. you know if we just do what we got to do to reverse it but the question is are we going to do we have the will hmm. yeah. yes yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know who who knows you know. What were the major uh, so let me let me wait, wait, let, let Jeff speak. Yes, Jeff. Uh, yeah. What are the uh, important changes that that he's recommending? 
What are the changes he recommend? Yeah. I'm trying to. Re- yeah. I can't remember. That's how much I'm. I'm. I, I'm into this. <laughs> well, no. I'm, I'm going to throw something out. What? Atomic energy. Why mm-hmm. is it still such a, a taboo subject to bring up? It's really the only way to get us out of this mess. It is, uh, you know, I have, I think I've argued this with you, Tom, on one or more occasions, because I'm for nuclear energy. I am too. Yeah. I feel that, that if it is properly administered and properly handled, now mm-hmm. that's a big get, get, okay. It's being done. It's being done in certain countries. Israel yeah. is a perfect example. Yeah. Well, France, France, but, Germany, but that it is it is a clean form China. of energy. Yeah. yeah. Um, if you right remember, I have a friend who is a Berkeley High Science teacher, uh, Karen Street, mm-hmm. and I actually brought her on the program because she's among the people that did have changed her mind on uh, on nuclear power as a result as a as a result of climate change. Mm-hmm. And so there's a whole yeah yeah there, there's there's an increasing number of people on the environmental left that are realizing that that yeah. uh, that nuclear power definitely needs to be a, a considered again. Yeah, but it, it, there there are ways of doing it where it can be safe. Absolutely, you know, oh, sure. people people always point to Chernobyl, for instance. But that was a case of a completely badly designed reactor that had no uh, uh, safety things in place. It was a reactor that's over 50 years old in technology. The new Mm -hmm. nuclear reactors that are being used, and here's something that I'll throw out because we are having rising tides. Mm -hmm. In Baja, you know, part of uh, the peninsula, Mm there's a company called Driscoll that makes berries. They are they built a nuclear power plant mm-hmm. that um, is desalinating water and creating land for uh, growing berries that has never had land, you know. Mm-hmm. And they're using desalinated water. Now we're rising tides everywhere, right? Build nuclear power plants desalinate the water and send it to the Central Valley in California, for instance, send it to uh, Arizona and Texas where there's you know, no water and, and, and alleviate our rising tides. At the same time, uh, get rid of coal burning, uh, get rid of natural mm-hmm. gas burning, and uh, be able to create enough power to, to power up all these electric cars. Yeah, uh, Tom. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what the real solution is, that's the, to, to put a price on carbon. So if we enact a carbon tax, then uh, then sources of electricity that uh, don't expend a lot of carbon, like nuclear power or, or, or wind or solar, uh, those will actually become more uh, fees, you know, feasible uh, economically. Mm-hmm. So yeah. yeah, just so so tax carbon emissions, and then um, more people will discover, uh, you know, nuclear power, and better methods of nuclear power will will be developed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Josh, what do you think about this? You have I've I've never heard you talk about, you know, the, the this issue of the environment and so on. Um, I mean, I. I'm certainly for opening up, you know, other avenues of our energy. I mean, I, I suppose I've never really understood, uh, even if, uh, you were on the right and you just completely, you know, 100% did not believe in any form of climate change at all. I mean, you know, you're just total denier, total hoax, whatever. Yeah. But why then is it still not good to pursue other avenues of energy? I mean, what? What would even be the harm? And if anything, you would think that it would fit into their mm. model of like free enterprise and open markets and free business. You know, I mean, like, so what if you're the coal industry and this other new solar industry comes and, you know, wipes you out? I thought they were into that kind of thing, you know? So then the coal people should buy solar companies and. Do whatever. I mean, I work for a large company, right? And when they feel 
threatened or see whatever, they go buy the other company, you know? I mean, if they can or whatever. Mm -hmm. So I don't, you know, so from that side, that's what I kind of think about that. Um, I mean, I do believe there's, there's, you know, something going on there. And I think that we should be finding any way that we can to make power that is cleaner. I mean, yeah. even if you don't believe that there's something up, what, so what's the harm in that, I, I guess, is what here's I'm saying. Something, I mean, here's something I don't get. You know, I, I think Biden said, he, or, or, or was it was it Cuomo said in New York State, or was it the president who recently said that by uh, 2040 he wants all cars to be solar, or to be battery operated? Right? 2035. 2035 and uh, that's a very nice place to go to but you got to really perfect those cars so you don't run down on the highway and you you're miles from a battery station yeah, you, you have, know, from a charging you station. you have to build an infrastructure yeah to support and you got to do yeah. that and more than that uh, my question is okay so you're not using gas but you are using electricity to charge the battery exactly and where is that electricity coming from? Mm -hmm. You know, and if it's and there's coming, probably ways to make it. I mean, that that yeah. certainly could be done. I mean, but the technology should adapt and evolve over time as the needs change, and as I mean, who knows what we will have discovered or invented in 20 years, right? I mean, we don't know. So that was my point about the power is. Even if, like I said, even if you're this, this total climate change denier, you know, nothing has changed. The earth is all the same or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't need all these other forms of energy and all that. Yeah, but I look at it as the same way I do like space exploration. We didn't need to go to space either, but we did. And as a result of that, you know, there was all this innovation or whatever and, and, a, and a growth in our economy. And a, why, why can't you just do that with energy? I mean, like I say, even if you think climate change is just complete bullshit, I mean, what's wrong with the, the exploration of these other markets and innovating things? And who knows what, you know, you would come up with or run into or whatever. And, you know, just look at it from that direction. I mean, I think Democrats could do a better job at selling climate change from that angle mm -hmm. rather than the one that they often use mm -hmm. i mean i'm not saying i'm in favor of them lying to people or whatever i mean no you can't but they could probably put a better spin on it rather than just you know saying it's bad and you know we're going to create a tax you know well here's uh, my I here's mean, my here's my question it just it just gets them into trouble i'm not saying tom is wrong or it won't help but i mean i'm just saying like are wise they kind of spin their wheels there, but, but you know? here's my question i'm I, I i never can quite get answers on this you know when things change the things that change wind up costing us more money and i foresee that if all of a sudden we're no longer going to gas stations somebody's going to want to make a profit off of that and the cost of electricity is going to go up just because all these people need to juice up their cars I mean, how do we prevent all that from happening? I mean, God knows the electric bills are bad enough as they are already. But for instance, how much does it cost you? Do you know anything about this, anybody, about how much it costs to make a electric car, purely electric car, yeah, I've run, seen, and I've how seen. much it costs in electricity a month to your I, bill? I, I, um, I have a hybrid plug-in, which means I got about 30 miles yeah, but before that, it, but, no, no, yeah. I still have to plug it in mm -hmm. and charge the battery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I have friends that have Teslas. Uh, the data that they've come up with is it costs in electricity to go about fifteen to eighteen thousand miles a year, uh, about uh, eighteen hundred dollars okay. for their Tesla. Mm -hmm. Now, my wife has a friend. Who bought a Tesla and then he bought uh, solar panels and the Tesla battery storage system. He is able to air condition his house in Dublin, California. And it gets hot out there. It's not San Francisco. Mm -hmm. People have air conditioning. Um, he's running with his solar panels and the ability to store the power, which is the 
the biggest problem with uh, solar panels mm. is storing the energy. Well, he's selling, uh, you know, energy back and empowering his house and uh, charging his car on his solar panels and storage system. Uh, and his, bat his, his electric bill is about 14 to $30 a month mm -hmm. compared to what it was before, which was, he said, in the neighborhood of 450 to 500 But you have to a make month. a lot of investments. I mean, solar is not cheap to put in your house. Uh, no, it's not. And in California, if you want solar, you have to go get an okay or something from certain well, authorities. Well, that's Bill, Bill Mars' shtick. It, and, yeah, and Bill Mars said it took him three yeah, years to well, get his solar okay. Um, it could be because of the neighborhood that he lives in. Yeah. Let me say, uh, I have friends that have gotten solar panels um, in our neighborhood, and their bill has been cut by two thirds. And the the investment that you put in still um, gives you a tax write off uh, because you're yeah. creating clean energy, and and um, you can in certain circumstances return some of the power back to the grid and and lower your bill even more. So everybody I know says it's about a fifteen to twenty thousand dollar investment to get set up and running. Mm -hmm. And it takes about four and a half years before you're you're making uh, that money back. It's like paid for in about four years and now you're you're home free. Yeah. Um, but Think in terms of also what you're doing to help the planet by not uh, going onto the grid and taking solar power. I, I like. I think it's. A, I think it's a good way of. You know, it's a good way for people yeah. that live in. Um, but areas. I don't. I'll tell you what I don't like. I, you I, have to store those it goddamn up. windmills. <laughs> you know. Oh yeah. I mean. You mean wind generators? The wind generators. Yeah. I mean wind generators. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the windmills. I mean, I don't know. Have you ever gone uh, to Tracy? Uh, oh, yeah, Tom, Tracy you drive to, uh, Yes, Livermore, of course. And all of, of a course. sudden, you hit the all these windmills up yeah. there, and everybody goes. The first time you ever see them, you go, "Isn't that wonderful?" And about the fiftieth time you see them, you go, "God damn it, those are ugly." Yeah, they are ugly, you but know? they create a lot of energy. They're and, and the energy. ones they put out in the ocean that are, um, you know, from. Good. The Put them in the ocean where I don't have to see them. Yeah. Well, that's that's what they're doing in England. Yes, Tom. I would say, and I brought this up before. Imagine, you know, that that, that those hills all cover with houses too, which you know, in a way, those those uh, wind generators they're not billing anything. They're they're actually generating electricity. Um, imagine that they're actually preserving a lot of open space. There's a lot of cattle. Uh, grazing that's going on there that wouldn't be happening because there would be land that would probably be be turned into houses. So what do you read, see the green hills with the with the wind generators or 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 housing tracks? Maybe no wind generators and no housing tracks. How's that? Well, well and, and let's just get more people into solar, and let's take care of things that way. You know, I mean. Uh, for all those generators that are out there, if they let's say put solar panels on those hills, would they be getting more electricity than with the windmills? No, 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 no. they no. don't. No, it, uh, it, and it, and you're relying on sunshine rather than wind. And in certain areas where they build these wind farms, uh, and I saw them when I was driving across the country in Iowa and Nebraska, mm -hmm. huge wind farms. Off, you know, instead of seeing cornfields left and right, you were seeing wind farms. Yeah, and they're generating huge amounts of uh, energy, uh, especially for rural areas that don't require the amount that a, a major city does. Mm -hmm. So in rural areas, they are they're very efficient and very good ways of, of creating power. Also, if you live uh, near the ocean, and you can create a power grid. That is underwater and being powered by you know wind generated um, turbines that are out you know a mile and a half out there so you don't see them. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, I I I think that uh, 
I, I'm more of an adherent to solar power than yeah. I am to wind power. Uh, uh, yes, well, it, it, they're both going to be only 10% of the problem. Yeah. We still need atomic energy to, uh, to get us I out I think of nuclear this. power is the answer. Yeah, I do. Absolutely I really do. the answer. Is your hand up, uh, Ray? No, but I can say something. Yeah. I, I believe that in France, I think they're 70% powered by nuclear power or more. Mm -hmm. and, they have, and they have excess and they sell it to Germany. Yeah. And, all, and mm -hmm. also, um, for some reason in the United States, we have a waste problem. Well, actually, problem. the Germans, it's good they're using nuclear power because they were very bad when they were using gas. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> but I'm bummed. I mean, yeah. but there and, is. And the, um, we, 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 um, we require that we dispose of our spent rods, in, like in mountains in, top, in Nevada and all, but uh, you can actually reuse they're the re spent they're rods. They're reusing them. I now. think they can be reused up to three times. Oh, they times. can now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, they are oh, reusable. Okay. They're reusable up to three times now. But Oh, good. And good. then they're pretty okay. spent that they don't, they don't become. They're not as hard to, to um, yeah. dispose of and not yeah. as radioactive and not as Yeah, it's just, to, it just says it's a bad end. rap because of Chernobyl and uh, and what we did in World War II. Uh, and, the, and then that, that tsunami in Japan a few years ago kind of put the nail in the coffin. But I yeah, think it's location, definitely location, location, location. It's location yeah. and it's safety and it's, sure. it's reinforcing those safety factors. You know, the problem with Chernobyl was it was a non-contained non nuclear power plant. Yeah. There was uh, no it was contained. a mess, it, it, and it was so old, and it wasn't maintained, and, and they didn't have any processes in case there was an emergency. It was it was everything that could go wrong did go wrong. It was it was a plus. And they never mess. sat down and yeah. said, "Here's what could go wrong, and let's make sure we prevent that from happening." Never, you know. no. So, those kooky ruskies. Yeah. Yes, uh, Jeff. Um, I lived in uh, Seattle, mm -hmm. Washington, about I don't know forty years ago. And the pricing of electricity was almost zero. And it was because it was all run by water. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if that still is going on. I assume it was. Hydropower is still. Uh, well, you, you had Boulder Dam, for yeah. instance, which yeah. served all of Southern California. The Colorado River is drying up now. Yeah, have you seen pictures of, of Hoover Hoover Dam? Yeah, and or Boulder Dam or whatever it's, it's called. The Hoover Dam. Uh, how low the table is is yeah. amazing. Yeah. It's disgusting. Uh, and a lot of that is uh, agriculture uh, that's being pulled off in Colorado and um, mm. in parts of Arizona where there was no agriculture before. They oh, let's suck water off of the Colorado River. Because it's always going to be filled up by the mountains. Well, no, well, it's it not. Isn't. Yeah. And um, we've got some serious problems. Yeah. And I'm telling you, desalination uh, is is going to be the answer with nuclear power. Uh, that's that's my theory. A um, friend of mine uh, did a lecture that I listened to about China and what they're doing uh, mm -hmm. to to alleviate the problems they're having with pollution. Yeah. During the summer, uh, there's a swath across China that's 2,400 miles wide and 800 miles from top to bottom. And within that uh, part of China, take a guess of how many people die from um, mm -hmm. lung-related disease because of the pollution. Yeah. Take a guess. What? One year. 1.4 million people a year die from respiratory ailments yeah. due to pollution. Yeah. And the Chinese people are now, you know, up in arms, and they have taken offline four coal burning uh, plants. They're still importing tons of coal from, uh, excuse me, coal from uh, Australia, but they are putting online in the well, next I mean, three the years the five thing, new the thing nuclear about power The Chinese plants. can solve almost any problem they have. Yeah. And they can solve it because labor's cheap. No, there's no uh, there's no uh, regulation. There's no regular. Yeah. There's no problem with the government yeah. hemming and hawing government. about doing things. Yeah. They just say do it. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, at one point a couple of years ago, they decided they were going to put Wi-Fi in every 
major and secondary city in China. For free Wi-Fi in those areas. And they were going to do it within two years, and within two years they did it yeah. because the government just said, you're going to do it, you know? Yeah. Well, that you are now speaking on behalf of those who believe in authoritarian governments well, I'll tell where you, somebody goes, I'll tell you this something. is what we're doing, it's, shut it's, up. It, let's be honest, it's much more efficient well, than what we've got in this country. Nothing gets done here anymore. Well, we're nothing. No, no, that, that's not nothing, quite true. Nothing. It's not quite true. We, we, no, we're going to see. In China, they have no Republican. <laughs> <laughs> what did Jeff say? They have no Republicans. Yeah. You, you know, the thing is that, that uh, uh, I, when I was in China, I, we had a woman who was a driver who took us around, and the company hired to take us around. And we got to talking with her, and uh, uh, I said, uh, is it true here in China, you, you know, you can't vote? And she says, oh, you can vote. She says, but you have to join the Communist Party in order to vote. Only members of the Communist Party are allowed to vote. Uh, and uh, I said, how do you feel about that? She says, well, I've never joined the Communist Party, and quite frankly, I really don't care. As long as I have a good job, and I'm getting, I'm eating regularly, and I have a roof over my head, and the government is making sure that the quality of life for all the people in this country is okay. She said, I, I don't even worry about the politics. Let them play their games. Just give me the goods, you know. Yeah, well, and, and, and really, they have a government that's totalitarian in a lot of ways, but is the, the, there is a... Well, the, the poverty is getting to be less and less in that country because they know what to do about it, you know? They take and they're taking care of it. Yeah. The trade-off that the people have to make is that they don't have the same kind of freedoms. But you know something? Freedom is awfully overrated because... <laughs> uh, and I, I'm saying that because what kind of freedom do we really have in this country? What kind of freedom have we ever had in well, this country? Ask, ask it's, it's an illusion of democracy that we live with here in America. Okay? We, we've convinced ourselves that we're democratic, but when you get right down to it, in practice, we're not. We're, okay? Disagree with me. We're a republic based on a democracy with a constitution. Yes, we have lots of uh, personal freedoms. Uh, we have a freedom of the press that they don't have. Oh, really? China. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, here we have freedom of the press? Yes. Do we really? Well, if you're going to start I, as someone jumping who, into the, as someone the rabbit who's hole been involved face, in, As someone who's been involved in this business of media, I'm here to tell you that that freedom is highly overrated and overstated. Well, I, 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 okay. I respectfully because disagree. It, because you, you, you've got the freedom to say whatever you want to say unless somebody finds out that, hey, you said it three years ago on Twitter and now you've got to get fired for it. That, well, so where's the freedom? That's, that's shame. Um, you know. Yeah, but I mean, uh, you know, that's, look that's, at some of these people whose lives are being ruined today. Oh, I, listen, we had a conversation about, you know, Al Franken, for instance, is a perfect example of a guy who, you know, made a joke and uh, he lost uh, all credibility with his party to the point where they forced him out. Yeah. And it was well, it's because Democrats eat their own. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Um, yeah. So I, I, I don't disagree with, but there are a lot of freedoms we have that I don't want to give up. As like a, what? Uh, to be able to drive an automobile. Well, no, that, that, that's not free. In fact, they will tell you that's not a freedom. That's it's a privilege. It's a privilege. Yeah. Uh, um, I don't care about owning a gun, so that's not a. Uh, but there are plenty of people out there that do, mm -hmm. uh, and it'd be interesting to see <laughs> if a totalitarian. Josh, Josh, uh, let me ask Josh. Josh, where am I full of crap on all? Well, I mean, it, that's your interpretation of it or whatever. I mean, I I don't really see it that way. I certainly would not choose to live under the Chinese model as opposed to the one that, you know, we live in, really under no circumstances. Now, I'm not going to make it out as if 
all Chinese people are just living under this yoke that's, you know, aka North Korean or whatever. It's not that bad. I mean, they're a somewhat open society and everything. I mean, it, they just have their. I think the Chinese people, from my understanding, are relatively free, but with limitations. And you know, once you reach those limitations, they're they're pretty hard, pretty hard line about it. Um, a freedom of the press, you know. I mean, the the country that we live in now was 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 pretty much built upon the ability of people to write down their thoughts to convince others that what they thought was a good idea, mm-hmm. and that that really formed the base of the pyramid that we built that we call the United States of America. Now, maybe we don't do that as much anymore, or maybe we do do it. We just do it in 140 characters or less or whatever. So we have changed the way that we've done it, but I think we still do it, but we were certainly based in that. I mean, you know, in in my opinion, I mean, we're, I think you're about as free here, you know, as you can get, I mean, for the most part, we we look. We have problems. Uh, well, I'm going to say I'm going to say that you you have freedom up to a point if you don't step outside the box. If you step outside the box, you don't have freedom. If you say well, something, if you say something possible, on Twitter, but, it's going to come back to bite you in the ass. There's no question about it. Yeah, and, but I think you're talking there. I just I guess I would say that's society is judging you in that way but not necessarily the uh, government. well no no companies do too let me give you an example well, i'm not going to but, 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 but i mean but I, not the government i'm not going to stand up for this guy mike richards uh, but uh because he's a i think pretty much a scumbag and i'm glad he didn't get the job on jeopardy and i'm glad he's out at uh, jeopardy and the executive Friday. producer yeah and and uh, uh you know and wheel of fortune but nevertheless the reason he's out is because he wrote something or said something he felt himself and believed that people didn't believe in. So he was literally railroaded, not by, not by anybody else. The company dumped him because the public didn't like what he wrote. Well, isn't that freedom of speech? I mean, I don't agree with what he wrote, and it was very tasteless what he wrote, but nevertheless, Freedom is an absolute. It's not a variable. Am I right? Well, I mean, yeah, I, I think that you're right in, in that and I'm aspect not, of yeah. it. But I guess what I'm saying is he wrote those things, and then, like, your freedom of speech, for example, has the limitation that you say whatever you want, and you're on the radio, and I turn on the radio, and you're saying it, and I think, man, this, this Alex Bennett guy is, you know, whack job. I don't want to hear this shit. So I turn the channel. But what I'm saying is I don't say that and no one from the government shows up and says you must stop saying that. I mean, if society rejects certain things, mm-hmm. that's society's prerogative or whatever. But I guess I'm just saying there is no real limitations placed on that by our government the way that, for example, China would. I mean, you know, China is pretty well known for you know, scrolling through Twitter and saying, "Wow, these people don't like China. They're out." Well, look at you know, look at Al, look at Al Franken. He takes a gag photo, which even the woman who was in the photo admits was a gag photo, like he was grabbing her tits. And he really was. And, and the next thing you know, everybody in Congress is asking him to quit, including yeah. people like Chuck Schumer. All these wonderful right. Democratic icons are suddenly asking her to quit. Cuomo was another case. I mean, Cuomo was never found guilty of anything. We didn't get to that point, okay? And yet, Kirsten Gillibrand, Schumer, the mayor, of, uh, the governor, of, uh, the mayor of New York, on and on and on, one Democrat after another, telling him he should resign, forcing him out of office without any kind of trial or any kind of hearing or anything, only mm-hmm. innuendo. Yeah, I mean, our, our leaders could certainly do a better job of, you know... Of, of being, of, of running a democracy, of, of acting like they're part of... Well, acting like they're part of a democracy. Yeah, I want to go to Tom. A, a better, they could do a better job at selling the fact that you sometimes have to, mm-hmm. 
you know, put up with things in order to enjoy, you know, your freedoms. And they, they certainly don't I mean, do And, and Kirsten Gillibrand, this is two down for her. Oh. Cuomo and Franken, proving that she just hates men. Okay, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Tom, you had your hand up. Yeah, um, I think this gets back down to the point of the differences between rights and privileges and uh, get back to the argument that Robert, that Robert Natale was making. And that is that Cuomo was a, was actually on trial, and he still isn't on trial. He's still, you know, he's he's a free man. He can f- be free to do anything he wants. But the people decided that they people, had lost faith in him as a, as wait a, minute, as wait a governor. Minute, and, and and holding holding office is a privilege. Tom, it is not Tom, a right. The people didn't decide anything. Nobody asked us to vote on it. Nobody asked for us whether we wanted him to be governor any longer. And I'll tell you the goddamn truth. If tomorrow he decided to run for governor again, he'd probably win. Well, I don't know that. You know, I mean, saying saying that the people, because there were certain... They were considering him, they were in the process of of, of, uh, trying to impeach him. And he had decided on his own, when he realized that the, the situation was going the way it was, he resigned. No, I think, he, you, look, I'll tell you something. Sometimes it gets to the point where people like, I think Al Franken, it got to a point where he just went, I don't need this shit. Yeah. You know, exactly I just don't that. need this shit anymore. And I think Cuomo came to that too. He was thinking to himself, you know, they've done so much to erode the belief that people have in me that I can no longer be governor and be effective. And so I'm going to move aside so the business of the state can go on. Okay. Um, you got to hand it to him for doing that. Mm-hmm. You know. yeah. Yes, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, Tony. You know, this may be a little off topic, but not too far off, I think. Is that another reason, like I was watching, I love to watch All in the Family, the old Norman Lear show, and I'll tell you why I like to watch it. Because he dealt with real issues and wasn't afraid to show it on TV. I think, I don't know what happened now with this whole, whatever the movement they call, if they don't like the joke or if you say something off call that doesn't fit into their parameters, they end your career. Mm -hmm. And to me, that is McCarthyism. That's McCarthyism because if you don't, it's like you're sitting in a room and they're dictating to everybody, well, we don't like you now, you're gone. And, And to me, that is more dangerous than anything, you know? I mean, I actually just don't really like the way they're dictating to everybody what we should, it's like you, you can't even speak your mind if it's not into their agenda. Well, I mean, you know, we, we, uh, I lived through the McCarthy era, and a lot of this reminds me of the McCarthy era, only this time it isn't the government necessarily doing it, it's the people doing it to each other. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and, well. and, you know, I just think that... Look what's happening uh, in California. Well, that, that there should be a, a honest pursuit of trying to get a truth rather than just saying, oh, you know, Cuomo's been accused of this and he's been accused of that, and um, that the, the, I guess he's got to get out now because simply people have accused him of stuff. Uh, I, it, 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 it's just that he, he had to leave office without the benefit of being able to prove guilt or innocence. I think he just got tired of the whole thing, too. Yeah. Yes, oh, I, I think Tom, no, Tom wants to say something. Well, he just, he's the one that asked for the investigation. Yes, <laughs> you know? yes. He's the one that instigated the, cause, cause the and, and when they investigated, proved that there, there's, that uh, the evidence was, there's overwhelming evidence I'm, uh, y- yeah. to support uh, the no, allegations. No, it's not over, it's not over, uh, well, no, I've heard, unfortunately, I've heard other, it actually retaliating, it wasn't, retaliating it, against people. It wasn't overwhelming you know? evidence, Tom. I've heard his side of the story, and it, it, there's a whole different set of facts. And what these people had there, they had in that game that made them want to do what they did in, in complaining about him. The, fa- the problem with Cuomo was is that he was a bully, uh, and he was not pleasant to work for, and he was, uh, in that respect, there wasn't a Democrat in this state probably that really liked him, okay? But that doesn't mean that he shouldn't still continue to be our governor. And, and uh, this whole thing, uh, if you look at it, if you really were to look at it closely, 
was a trumped up job to get him you know impeached or out of office and whatever by people who disliked him intensely and that included the dis the attorney general of the state of New York yeah, absolutely yeah and she, she it was, was known she hated him yeah yeah so I mean they so what do they do they they picked and choose the information that they got and threw some out and accepted others and came up with their decision but it doesn't mean their decision was right and uh, he never really mm -hmm. had a chance. It, the only thing he ever did to try and defend himself was to just tell his side of the story, which if you ever have time to listen to it, uh, he makes a pretty good case that uh, this is a trumped up deal. So, you know. But that's just my opinion, you know. Mm -hmm. And I, what am I? I'm just a fucking stupid talk show host. Not even right. that, really. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I'm a previous nominee for being in the Hall of Fame, right? You know, I, I, I don't don't listen to me, okay? Uh, and I've often said that. You know, what do I know? It's just my opinion. But I, I just but, go ahead. Well, go go ahead. You know, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna wrap up something from earlier. But yeah, I thought you were done. But go I ahead. Go, go right ahead. Uh, well, I was just gonna say, you know, with what Tom brought up at the very beginning with the climate change and everything. I mean. You know, I just think that there there is a way for the left eventually to, to try to help sell that by getting people who don't believe in it to understand the, the economic benefit from it. I mean, mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. I mean, my wife and I are pretty familiar with and like the the RV lifestyle and traveling the country and all that. And, and I'm telling you, man, you, you can get four or five guys who could be wearing Trump T-shirts and Trump hats and a Trump bumper sticker on the truck, and the whole deal standing in a circle of four or five guys talking about the solar panels they just put on their RV and how great they are. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't have to buy gas for this generator. I don't have to run it. I don't have to listen to it. I, I, I mean, they're not talking anything about politics, Trump, or anything. I mean, these are completely anti-climate change people and all that. And and I've seen them talk about solar panels for an hour. Yeah. yeah. I mean, no, where'd you buy yours and how much did it cost? And did you get this kind or that kind? I mean, I mean, I'm serious. So, I mean, there's ways to get people involved in that. Uh, yeah. yeah. They just need to find a way to okay. do a better job of stuff like that. Anyway, it's yeah. been an interesting and a very good discussion. Yes. And I really appreciate it. Before we go, let me mention that Jack is not on again tonight. Uh, I think he's back home, if I'm not mistaken. Now, I talked to him earlier today. And it turned out that the reason he's had um, uh, uh, problems uh, of f getting falling over, okay, was medication. Mm -hmm. That he, when he was uh, first had his heart transplant, not transplant, but bypass and so on, they gave him certain medicines, which he continues to take to this day. However, another doctor added another drug to that regimen, and that is what is causing him to pass out. That's okay, good. and uh, they sent him home from the hospital, and he's going to be okay, but he said, I'm not ready to do a show tonight because I've been in the hospital for two days, and I don't know how many of you have ever been in the hospital for two days, but it's pretty difficult to get over. <laughs> anyway, uh, let me start playing the theme here. Uh, Josh, great having you here tonight. Uh, great having uh, uh, Tom. It's always a bonus when we get you to call. I wish you would do it more often. Uh, Tony, thank you. Thanks to Ray and thanks to Jeff. Uh, and uh, I, while it was kind of a scarce amount of people here, it was a good amount of people, and they, you were it's all good terrific. And thank you very much, buddy, yeah, for being good, with us. Good to be with you. And 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 really, you should probably uh, let me see here. What do we do? Oh yeah, we wave goodbye at them, okay? And they wave goodbye back at us. There we go. And that's it for uh, our little uh, show tonight. Thank you so much for being with us uh, here. Uh, you know, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's nice, and we'll see you next time you're in town. Absolutely. Okay, because he, stay, he stays here at Shea Bennett or Shea Miller, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, uh, there's a rerun tonight of, uh, of, of Jack Bishop and the intersection, and he should be back again, he said next Tuesday. In the meantime, I'm Alex Bennett. We'll see you, well, let's see, Monday at 4 o'clock with the uh, 
pop-up show that we do. And then we'll be back here with The Ramble on Tuesday, 10.30, Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And by the way, get vaccinated. Wear a mask. Bye-bye.